Greetings from Miami. I've been asked to give a lecture on implant selection in primary, complex primary, and revision total hip replacements. These are my disclosures. Um, I looked at my uh, choices for primary total hip stems over the past 40 years, and there's obviously been a gradual change from cemented to uncemented implants, as you see. Uh, I'd also point out the beginning of a prospective uh, database that I began and continued to this day uh, uh, from 1986. This has been invaluable in evaluating different implant choices over time and resulted in the progression of choices that I made. Um, there's nothing wrong with a well-done hybrid total hip replacement. Here's a 20-year follow-up. Um, uh, it's a controlled stem insertion. The stem height and leg length determined by the neck cut. Uh, little reliance on the proximal femoral bone geometry. Version fine-tuned control at the last uh, portion of seating in the cement. Full uh, length stem fixation, in this case with cement. Uh, and the stem diameter is less than the canal, uh, keeping in mind the stem strength versus stem stiffness um, uh, issue. Uh, it's very difficult to do an acceptable cemented total uh, hip stem in my uh, institution. Um, there are 30 steps in my uh, uh, technique, and the residents all want to see the case. And really, you're the only one in the room uh, who knows uh, the steps that you want to follow. Um, my first uncemented uh, stem was the original CLS, a titanium alloy uh, implant with a new corundum blast finish. Uh, we were very impressed with the fixation, 96% good or excellent results at 92 months, uh, minimal thigh pain, excellent fixation. We really became believers in this uh, uncemented uh, uh, fixation technology, but uh, we were only using it in patients with good bone quality. Had, it had a very poor originally uh, head-to-neck diameter ratio, high dislocation rate, uh, very valgus neck geometry, which made it difficult to reproduce uh, offset and anatomy. Uh, and leg length was somewhat unpredictable because it was difficult to predict the final seating height of the implant. So we became very interested in a new technology, the Identifit at that time, which is a custom implant uh, allowing us to take a mold of the canal. Uh, and while we were working on the acetabulum, we could uh, manufacture the stem uh, interoperatively, uh, putting in any kind of offset, any kind of antiversion uh, that we uh, desired. So it was really something. Um, but uh, we were the first to um, uh, report the poor uh, results, 17% revision rate at three, uh, 30 months. Uh, clearly, um, a perfect press fit without any kind of osseointegration surface uh, was not sufficient. Um, so we retreated to a more conventional stem uh, system that allowed us to transition from a cemented to a uh, cementless stem intraoperatively. Uh, so we were still using cemented stems in patients with poor bone quality. In 2008, I was still looking for an uncemented stem that I could use in all my primary hips. Uh, I wanted a controlled insertion, uh, much like the cemented stem, uh, could be used in all my patients, allow reliable implant uh, seating height, uh, allow variable neck cut heights to achieve correct leg length, no reliance on the calcar curve, full length osseointegration surface. Three things had changed by that time that were important to me. The technology of HA coding had been perfected, long-term results of the Karai stem had been reported, uh, and the exclusivity of uh, the uh, Karai type stem geometry uh, and design had expired. Uh, so we became interested in a fully HA coded stem called the Element stem. Uh, it was a Karai type uh, design with some modifications, full length HA coding, thinner HA coding than the Karai uh, to allow a more reproducible seating of the implant, uh, and right or wrong, we chose the Collis uh, version. Um, uh, we reviewed uh, 277 uh, hips 
uh, found 92.4% uh, survival at five years. There were four fractures, due, uh, two due to subsidence uh, very quickly after the operation. Um, uh, two were uh, truly traumatic events uh, later in the follow-up. Uh, 18 stems subsided more than four millimeters, which uh, uh, we did not uh, like. Um, and there were four aseptic loosenings with progressive radiolucencies uh, without infection. Um, so my current choice of primary total hips is now a fully HA-coated uh, stem, Karai type of design. I've now changed to using a collar. I think it's a good idea, especially to uh, limit subsidence. may have an effect on fracture rate uh, early post-op. And I do not hesitate to put in a, an occasional prophylactic wire or cable, um, especially in patients with poor bone quality. So what about complex primaries and revisions? We typically face four challenges. Limited or poor bone stock, uncertain lib length, uh, joint instability, and remember, you may be wise to uh, recall that you may have to remove the implant eventually. Um, there are two implant design choices that we face in these difficult cases. One is whether uh, to use metaphyseal fixation or diaphyseal fixation. And the other is whether to consider a, a modular or monoblock implant. One excellent choice uh, for proximal fixation in a modular device has be become the SROM. Uh, we were, and all people, concerned about the modular junction that was introduced with this implant. But with 11-year follow-ups, uh, Hugh Cameron reported very impressive results without any difficulty with the uh, uh, tapered junction. Uh, so with that, uh, we began using the SROM uh, quite a bit. Uh, but there are limited metaphyseal and stem combination options. Uh, and they're limited options as far as the varying neck height. Uh, also, the SROM uh, does fracture at times, uh, but interestingly, it's, it rarely involves uh, any difficulty with the taper junction, a titanium alloy, titanium alloy uh, junction. So we became interested in a three-part modular uh, stem, um, which had uh, uh, fully interchangeable segments. So necks with different heights, as you see on the left, um, uh, different size metaphyseal, uh, separate from different size uh, stems. Um, uh, this was uh, very useful, uh, particularly in big uh, uh, metaphyseal-diaphyseal mismatch. Uh, here you see such a situation in a revision of a, uh, a heel uh, periprosthetic uh, fracture. Um, uh, uh, but um, my partner uh, had uh, one fatigue failure at the neck metaphyseal junction, so we stopped using it. This was in a patient who weighed 340 pounds. Uh, in 1996, a work hardening technique was introduced in industry called low plasticity burnishing. Uh, in 2005, to further increase the taper strength in the Accumatch modular, uh, implant low plasticity burnishing uh, was used uh, to increase the taper strength 30 percent. Currently uh, we are following 32 patients after that improvement um, uh, and we reported 95 uh, percent survival at five years, now nine years, without any ta taper uh, uh, failures. An example of use of this device uh, in primary hip replacements is a patient who uh, had an acetabular uh, fracture dislocation. Uh, it healed in this manner. Um, and uh, you can see how the, uh, the position of the acetabular component was uh, uncertain. So it was very nice to have the versatility of different uh, neck heights uh, to solve this problem. Another uh, example of uh, use of this implant is in the second stage of a two-stage infection revision uh, where we're often faced with mismatches between the, uh, the metaphyseal and diaphyseal portion. Uh, for these uh, other types of fractures, such as this Vancouver B3, uh, you certainly cannot rely on the proximal bone stock. 
um, you have to uh, use some type of distal fixation device. Uh, and the corundum blast finish, so successful for us in our CLS experience, has revolutionized the treatment of these cases. Uh, the corundum blast finish stimulates the activation of uh, prostaglandins E2 and uh, transforming growth factor resulting in really direct bone on growth, which is uh, uh, incredibly uh, successful. Um, most companies now offer modular versions of this type of uh, distal fixation uh, uh, technology. Um, but if you use the taper uh, uh, designs, uh, you're always concerned, as we are, about failure at the taper junction. Uh, but it m certainly makes uh, obtaining uh, the correct leg length uh, much easier. Uh, companies also often uh, offer monoblock uh, versions of this type of technology using the corundum blast finish with tapered fluted stems. Um, uh, be aware that there are variations in taper angle from the central axis of 3 to 5 degrees, and there are also variations in the flute shapes, um, either sharp and pointed or rectangular. Um, there are arguments for either. So what would you do in this one? A 92-year-old woman, motor vehicle accident, had a compression fracture of the lumbar spine and a humerus fracture as well, and faced with this uh, unbelievable, uh, uh, challenging um, uh, uh, periprosthetic fracture. Um, uh, well, in this case, you can't use any of the technology that we talked about. Uh, you have to go to a tumor implant uh, using some type of uh, ultrasonic, such as Oscar technique, to melt into the existing cement mantle, probably the strongest thing in this patient's uh, uh, femur uh, when she presented. Um, I thank you very much for your attention, and it's a great pleasure uh, and honor to be participating in uh, this conference. Thank you. Mm -hmm.